Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. So today I wanted to talk to you. Woo! Sorry about that. Today I wanted to talk to you about MAC Holiday Collections. I want to try out my previous collections that I've... I keep saying previous and it's just too many times. I'm going to be trying out products I've previously purchased from Max Holiday Collections. They, every year, I'm super hyped and mega excited for the Mac Holiday Collection. Every year in the UK, I have to like wait up till midnight searching the Mac website, trying desperately to grab the bits that I want. Every year, I'm like tormented. Do I get that? Do I get this? Do I get it all? It's just always gorgeous. The packaging is always beautiful. I'm always really happy with the things that I pick up apart from one, which we'll discuss. But yeah, it's it's a highlight for me. I'm always really excited for it. So when the images started to come out for this year's Mac Holiday Collection, it really got me thinking about the previous years, the products I've previously picked up, do I still enjoy them? Do I still use them? Do I want to buy more from this year's holiday collection? Am I done with Mac holiday collections? Etc. So I decided to pull everything out that I've got from previous years, try it on and talk with you guys about whether I think it was worth it, whether I still enjoy it, whether I would purchase them again if they came out this year, why I'm not going to be purchasing anything from this year's holiday collection and all of the above. So everything I have is from 2017 and 2018. 2016 collection I completely passed on and the 2015 collection is like long gone. So um, I'm going to focus on 2017 and 2018. So 2017 was the snowball collection and 2018 was the shiny pretty things collection. So in 2017 I went kind of nuts and I bought loads of stuff because it was kind of my first big purchasing of the Mac Holiday collection so I wanted to get lots of things and that year there were a lot of things that were apparently like never to be seen again. So the first thing I got was the set which contained Mac's Whisper of Guilt Extra Dimension highlighter. So as we know this is now permanent but at the time it was um, a re-promote. So this was a highlight that was like a cult of Max and it had been discontinued and it came back for this holiday collection in this glorious packaging. And so I was like I need that, I desperately need it, everyone was talking about it. It was like the item that year. And so, of course, Mac released it as a set. So in order to get this, you had to purchase the set, which came with this little bag and this little brush, which is presumably supposed to be a highlight brush. It's the 140 SES. So yeah, it came as a set with these three products in it. So when it comes to this, I have zero regrets. I love this highlight. I'm obsessed with it. I absolutely love it. This is what I've got on this side of my face today this highlight um, as you can see it's very well used the star logo that was on there is almost completely gone I love the packaging I do not love that I had to buy these two products I never use this brush um, I think at the time I thought actually it's a pretty good bronzer brush and that's what I used it for today in the video um, but I don't really ever use it it's just too like the handle is too short it just doesn't store nicely in my like brush holders. And as for this, it's like, um, yeah, it's pretty, but I mean, it's very small for a makeup bag. Maybe you could keep your sort of few things for your everyday school run type makeup in it. But yeah, it's not very practical for me. I never use it. This is just bunged in a drawer along with this brush as well. Um, so I think those kits where you actually only want the one product, but you have to pay extra because it comes in a set. Those are the things to avoid. And as we now know, this is now permanent. So I didn't need to buy all of this stuff. I could have just waited um, and picked this up later as a single, although obviously it wouldn't be in this really beautiful packaging. But if this wasn't permanent and this came out in this year's holiday collection, I would definitely pick this up again. I love it. It's beautiful. Um, I really like the packaging. I get a lot of use out of this. It really suits my skin tone. So it was definitely a good purchase as far as the product. Next up, this is the Stylishly Merry Eyeshadow Single from that same collection. This um, collection actually came out in America before it came out in the UK. So I knew this shade, the single eyeshadow shade, was going to sell out like that because it had done in the US so I was ready. I didn't really want 
want this. Um, I'm not really a single eyeshadow kind of girl. I never really use them. I always stick to my palettes. So I didn't really want this, but because it was selling out in the US, I was like, I don't want to get FOMO. So I got it and it did almost instantly sell out over here as well. Now, once it arrived and I swatched it, I understood the hype. It's one of these shadows that has a really extreme shift. When you look at it in the pan, it like just kind of looks like a very glittery pink. And then if you tilt it, it looks like a very glittery gold. It's one of these shadows with a real shift. So you can see there, it's very gold in some lights and very pink in others. It's like two totally different shades. And here it is on my lid. Now, as much as I think this is a gorgeous eyeshadow, absolutely beautiful, I love the packaging, I love the shade, I don't have anything like this in my collection. However, I barely ever use it, just because it is a single, and that's not something that I generally reach for a lot, hardly at all. I just always want to use my palettes. So for me, this was definitely, not that I necessarily regret it, because when I do use it, I like it, um, but I don't get much use at all out of it. So for me, this is definitely like a mispurchase because I bought it based on other people's hype rather than will I use this? Is this the type of product I'll get a lot of use out of that I'll really enjoy? And the answer to that is no, because personally, I just don't use singles. So again, that is definitely something that this year, the singles, I don't even look at them. I'm not interested in them because I just know that I won't use it personally. So that's definitely something to think about with holiday collections. Is it actually just hype and FOMO or is it really actually ap like appealing to you personally and what you enjoy? Next up, my biggest fail as far as MAC holiday collections. This is the lipstick I have on my lips right now. And this is I'm Glistening from that same collection. MAC does this every year with lipsticks. They bring out these stunningly packaged lipsticks that are either already available in their permanent collection or they're very like gimmicky to me or sort of unwearable. Like we're seeing it this year, they've brought out like a blue covered in stars and a silver covered in stars. And I just think, I know some people will love that, but it's definitely not a lipstick I'm gonna wear. Um, and you kind of get lured in by the packaging and the glorious like just look of how pretty everything looks. And this does undoubtedly look really pretty. Does it suit me and look good on my lips? Do I wear it ever? No, I feel like I look like a robot whenever I put this on. I feel like it makes me look dead. It doesn't suit me at all. It's very metallic. It kind of doesn't look as bad on camera as it does in real life. I will just say, I know people are going to be saying, oh, it looks great. It looks really nice. Some people are going to say that, I know. Um, but I promise you, in real life, it just doesn't suit me at all. It's much too cool. It's much too, like, grey and just the, like, it's very, very metallic. So it's just for me, it's not wearable at all. And that was definitely a mistake on my part. So next up from the Shiny Pretty Things collection, I picked up this face palette and this was the medium deep Shiny Pretty Things extra dimension face palette. So it has an extra dimension bronzer, blush and highlight and they are all limited edition. So there are no permanent shades in here and these three shades still do not exist. They haven't been brought back out for this year. They haven't been made permanent. They are just in this palette and this is everything I have on my face today so this highlight is on this side whisper of guilt is on this side so this side of my face is all this palette bronzer blush and highlight I love this palette not only do I think it's very pretty and um, I love that it has a little mirror I think it's very good value for money you get three full-size products in here this um, palette all together is 14 grams so like four and a half grams per pan which is really big decent size for a cheek product these are all beautiful formulas blend beautifully on the skin very nice buildable natural luminous bronzer and blush and a really pretty highlight these palettes for me are the star of the show as far as max holiday collections go i just feel like they offer value for money they're very wearable they are kind of something unique because generally they are you know solely available in the collection this is the bronzer blush and highlight here this is the lipstick i'm wearing and this is that eyeshadow 
So yeah, I absolutely love this face palette. I'm not sure how well you're going to be able to tell, but it is very beaten up, very well loved and very well used because I love face palettes. The extra dimension bronzers for MAC aren't permanent and I think they are their best product. I love their extra dimension bronzers and their blushes and I don't think you can really go wrong with the MAC highlight. So I feel like this is like the standout product for me. This is the, these products, these extra dimension face palettes from MAC, I think are their best products at the moment. The thing they do the best. If I didn't have this palette and love it and it gives me everything I want, I would definitely pick up the deeper face palette from MAC this year because it has a bronzer. The lighter palette doesn't have a bronzer, I think it's like basically all highlights. I think a couple of them are called blushes, but they're very glowy blushes. Um, whereas the deeper palette has a bronzer, blush and highlights in it. So I would definitely recommend picking that up. If you don't have a MAC face palette like this one, that for me is the highlight of the collection. That is the thing that offers you value for money, a really nice usable everyday continue to use it year round product that you can't buy the rest of the year. This year in their face palettes, there are some permanent shades in there, but there are also some unique to the palette shades. So you're not gonna be able to buy that palette or certainly not for the amount of money buy all of those shades as singles once the face palettes have sold out. So those for me are definitely the, the best products to buy out of the MAC holiday collections. Every year they're glorious. Every year they're very beautifully packaged. They give you value for money, a lot of product in there and you will use it for the rest of the year. So there you have it. I have definitely a couple of misses on my decisions with Mac Holiday Collections, but definitely a couple of huge hits. And I've really learned a lot from the last few years looking at those Mac Holiday Collections about what I'll use, what is best for me, what is worth picking up, and what to close my eyes and not look directly at. I hope you found this video helpful and I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.